As a young girl, I spent much of my summers in and along the shores of a spring-fed pond. I'll never forget these experiences, and I'll not forget the first time that I drank from a spring coming up from the ground for the first time. It was a cool temperatures, that earthy mineral content that brought a sense of refreshness and renewal that had previously been unknown to me. I remember discovering my favorite spring in the Hundred Mile Wilderness as a young teen on one of my first backpacking trips.、Um, I'd disclose a little bit more about this, but as people tend to covet their favorite fishing holes, I'll leave that up to your own discovery. And in the years following, after having backpacked more than 7,000 miles across the mountain ranges of the United States, I came. To depend on similar sources, not only for my survival, but also as a relative reminder of how precious Maine's groundwater is, and that few other places compare. I had a vision. I had a vision that my son and following generations would grow up and enjoy the same Maine that I grew to love. I now hike with my son, I work with my son, and I enjoy water with my son, and we do about everything together. But this vision was challenged. My ideas of what water security meant to me came into sharp focus in 2012, when Nestle, the most powerful food and beverage corporation on the planet, came forth negotiating. A U.S. precedent-setting contract with our private municipal water supplier that would give them an upper hand of control over local citizens for decades to come. Us citizens had little voice in the matter, so we managed to get a public hearing in our town so our voices could be heard. We set out and put a message in a bottle. On every resident's doorstep in town to educate them and encourage them to come out of their homes and testify. We managed to overflow the hearing site on that day, and here is one of the testimonies that was given. Hello, I live in Freiburg, and I drink. Well, actually, I apologize. There's a little bit of noise in the room, but the importance is that the reporter and the commissioner is here. So. But, but speak as loudly as you can. And Hello, my name is Lou. I live in Freiburg, and I drink my water from the Freiburg Water Company. I do not feel that the 45-year contract is a good idea for several reasons. One, the Nestle multinational corporation has caused grief in many other countries, and I am afraid they have already caused grief <coughs> in our community. Two, Nestle's water brand Poland Springs claims to be a good neighbor. But I think when they sued the town and its people for saying no to them, that is not a good neighbor. In school, we learn a lot about not bullying, and this seems like bully behavior to me. We do not want to be bullied for the next 45 years. I think we could have a reward system and have them as neighbors for the five years at a time to help them with the good neighbor behavior, and to make sure our aquifer stays agreeably healthy. Three. First of all, I must say thank you for letting me speak on this matter now, because I may not be allowed to speak again until I'm 54 years old about this. I spoke an important truth to power in this video, though I didn't fully realize its significance at the time. I was a nine-year-old kid who was trying to find my own voice and confidence in it. Though I was intimidated by speaking into a microphone for the first time and hesitant after being interrupted, I anxiously continued. And though I was the only child to speak at that hearing, I realized. 
It is us youth that are the biggest stakeholders of our futures. As my elder generation engages in either the risky business of gambling away our water legacy or protecting it. Since the commissioners I testified before on that day all had ties to Nestle, I helped create an online petition and delivered over 135,000 signatures to our state house, which were rebuffed by our governor. I remember feeling frustrated and angry that he wouldn't even engage with me about my concerns. Nor did he ever respond to the personal letter I left him. I now wonder, what if we had the governor's support? Especially after having taken the case all the way to the Maine State Supreme Court, where, after a three-year-long battle, we lost to private interests. We lost because our current groundwater protection laws are not strong enough for the legal and financial pursuits of Nestle or for Wall Street banks that are selling water futures to wealthy investors. Our groundwater, if not protected, will be sold to the highest bidder. So if you're unaware of what's going on with our groundwater, you may be responsible for the selling of our commons, our life legacy out from underneath us. I ask that you please not ignore my generation. Think of us, include us the way my mom does, invest in us and the environment we'll be living in. And as Nestle markets Maine in a bottle, Few of its consumers question about its freshness, its purity, its content. Nor do they often question how it is sourced or the environmental and social impacts that it has. Water privatizers would have us believe that water is an infinite resource and that it will always be replenished and available to us, so as to prove what they might take or control is inconsequential. In 2016, Nestle topped all, well, Poland Spring brand bottled water, <laughs> topped all sales combined of Coca-Cola in New York City metropolitan area by more than $113 million. Their fierce marketing campaigns try to convince us that what comes from their bottle is superior to our tap water, which moves us away from drinking from our own homes. And it has catapulted them to be the number one selling spring water in the United States and the number one selling scanned item in New York City. That said, 15% of Poland spring sales happen right here in our own state of Maine, which informs us how willing we are to buy back our own groundwater from them at more than a 2,000% markup. Ouch. And with each passing tanker truck that goes by our home on Main Street, we have a steady stream of reminders 24 hours a day and seven days a week that one of the fastest growing industries and most profitable ones are going by our home every day. Maine will soon surpass the one billion gallon per year mark, which roughly equates to 770 gallons per person per year in the state of Maine with no dignified return. Our state lacks a long-term vision that will ensure our water security for the long term. And this is why I now Organize with my son, because what we choose to do, we choose to do it together. Maine is one of only three states with an antiquated absolute dominion groundwater law, which makes us vulnerable to exploitation. Our surface waters, lakes, rivers, streams, 
all have protection under a public trust, and doing the same for our groundwater could preserve it for the benefit of all. The original stewards of the land we occupy, the Wabanaki, still have it right. Water is life, and when we disrespect our water sources, we break an important social contract with each other in a direct affront to our lives and all life that depends upon it. These are deep-rooted truths that we recognize and understand whether consciously or subconsciously. There is a way forward, even more so if adults give the children in their lives an opportunity to find their voice in important public matters early on as we discover truths that are bigger than ourselves together. We really can't afford to not involve our youth, especially if we are to carry on a compassionate legacy of justice forward for the next generation. And in each other, as in water, we, we trust. trust. What are your family's common values or passions? It's not enough to say that you value the children in your lives. So include us in solving the root problems that we are confronted with. And by doing it together, we will build our compassionate way forward and renew our social contracts with each other. Thank you. Thank you.